All right, what's up guys? Today I want to go over another interview question with you guys. Obviously the question is going to be on leak code like it always is. Today we're going to go over an Amazon question and it's called reorganized string. All right guys, so today obviously we're gonna be going over another interview question. Today our question is from Amazon, but it's also asked by Facebook, it's also asked by Google, so it's definitely a good question to know. The problem is called reorganized string and our problem description says, given a string S, check if the letters can be rearranged so that two characters that are adjacent to each other are not the same. If possible, output any result, and if it's not possible, they tell us to return the empty string. So if that doesn't make sense, let's go through our first example here. So for our first example here, right, if our string that we were given was AAB, we would output ABA. And the reason for that is because we can't allow the two A characters to be adjacent, right? We can't have any characters that are adjacent be the same character. So we'd output ABA because that makes sure that the two A's are split apart by a B. So now in example two, right, if we had the input AAAB, we would have to output the empty string here. And the reason for that is because there's not enough B characters to separate all the A characters, right? We only have one B, so we could insert it between the first two A's, or we could insert the B between the second two A's. But the problem is that we don't have enough B's to guarantee that the two A's are not adjacent. And so we'd have to output the empty string because of that. So that's our problem for today. This is actually a greedy problem, and I think it's important to understand why this problem is a greedy problem. And that once we do, I think the problem becomes a lot simpler. So these are pretty simplified examples, right? They're not too crazy, but what's really important here is that we wanna try and separate the most frequently occurring character first. So that indicates that we need to count however many times each of these characters occurs, and then we wanna make sure that we're constantly separating the most frequently occurring character by the next most frequently occurring character. And if we could do that, that's gonna guarantee us that we actually can create a string such that no two characters that are adjacent are the same. So we know a couple details already, right? We need to know how many times our characters each occur. And then we know that however we're gonna form this string, we have to make sure that we're always taking the most frequently occurring character, separating it by the next most frequently occurring character. And the reason for that, if you just kind of think about it logically, is because you have so many of such a character you need to make sure that you're always trying to place that character first to get it out of the way, right? To use all the occurrences of that character. And that's what we're gonna try and do here. So the first thing we said we need to do is we need to count all the occurrences of each respective character. Then we need to have some sort of data structure that's gonna allow us to quickly know this is the most frequently occurring character, this is the second most frequently occurring character, and then we could try and place the most frequently occurring character into our result string followed by the next most frequently occurring character. And again, if we can do that, right, if we can place all those different characters into this result string such that none of them are adjacent, none of the adjacent characters are the same, then we should be good to go. So let's try and start doing that now, right? So the first thing that we want to do is count those characters. So we want to use a hash map, right? Counting characters is really easy with a hash map. So we could have a hash map from a character to its count. And then the next thing that we want to do is have that data structure to let us know how often things occur and have it organized by how often they occur greedily. So a max heap would be really good for that. So let's start getting this code down using a, a hash map, and then we're going to use a heap as well. So the first thing we want is that map. We said it's going to be from a character to an integer to count the occurrences of each of the respective characters. And we could say counts equals new hash map, right? So this will hold however many times each of our characters occurs. And the next thing we want to do is just populate that hash map. So we could say for every character C in S.2 care array, we just want to say counts.put C with the count of whatever it has. So counts.get or default, the count of C or zero plus one. So I use this in a lot of my videos and if you guys aren't familiar with it, all it's saying is put the current character C with a count of whatever the count of C already is or if it doesn't already exist, put it with zero and then just add one to it. So it either increments however many times it's occurred by one or it puts it with a count of one if it's the first time we see it. Great, so now, hopefully by the time we get here, we should actually have all of the characters counted and put into our hash map, right? So now what we wanna do is we wanna make that max heap. So the way we could do that in Java is priority queue 
And this is just going to hold characters. We're going to say max heap equals new priority queue. And then we have to do a little bit of work here, right? So we need to tell the priority queue how to organize our elements, right? So the first thing we want is two elements, right? So we want to tell the heap how to compare elements. And then the next thing we want to do is tell it how to compare those elements. So now we want to tell the heap how to compare these two elements, right? And we said that we want our heap to one, be a max heap. And two, we want it to be a max heap with respect to however many times a character has occurred. So we could say, we want to do counts.get however many times b has occurred minus counts.get however many times a has occurred. And so that will basically, again, do that, those two things, right? It'll initialize a max heap and it'll tell the max heap to order elements based on however many times they've occurred according to our hash map. And now we could just populate our max heap with all of our characters. So we could say max heap dot add everything that's in counts key set. Great, so now by the time we get to line 11, we have the hash map counting however many times each character has occurred. And now we have a great max heap, right? So this max heap is gonna be really helpful. And the max heap has all the characters in it organized such that, that the root of the heap contains a character that occurs the most frequently. So now what we can do is we can try and do what we said initially, right? We wanna get the most frequently occurring character, place it into our string, and then place the next most frequently occurring character right after it, so we know that there's gonna be no conflict, right? There's not gonna be any um, two adjacent characters that are the same. So now we could say, wow, our max heap size is greater than one, let's just get those two characters, right? So if we have two characters, let's get the two different characters and then append them to our string, and then we'll put them back into our heap if they still have a count that's greater than one. So now we'll say our current character is gonna be max heap dot remove. And so again, this is gonna be the most frequently occurring character. And then we'll say character next equals max heap dot remove as well. So now this is the greedy part, right? We're greedily taking the most frequently occurring character and the next most frequently occurring character, and we're gonna add them to our result, which we actually need to make. <laughs> and so we're gonna say string builder result equals new string builder. And the reason why I'm using a string builder here is just because strings are really expensive in Java. So anytime we do string manipulation, it's really great to use a string builder. So now once we have those two characters, I'm gonna say result.append our current character. And then I'm also gonna say result.append the next character. And so this is gonna help us guarantee that we're placing those characters that occur a lot uh, greedily, right? Always trying to place them first in our string. And we're making sure that they're not, uh, any of those two adjacent characters are not gonna be the same, right? Because we're taking the most frequently occurring character and the next most frequently occurring character and putting them together. So now we could say counts.put current with whatever counts.get current has minus one. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing for next. So that's gonna decrement the amount of times going forward that we need to use those characters, right? We're recording that we just put them both in the string. So now we have to use each of them one time less. So now we just have to check, okay, if we still have to use them more, right? So if both of their counts are greater than zero, we need to put them back into our heap so we can keep trying to add characters to our result string. So now we could say if counts.getCurrent, if that count is greater than zero, then we need to say max heap dot add that character back. And we're again, we're gonna do the exact same thing for next. So if counts dot get next is greater than zero, we're gonna say max heap dot add back next as well. Great. So this heap will, con this loop will continue greedily taking the most frequently occurring two characters and placing them one after another, decrementing how many times we have left to use them and putting them back into the heap as necessary. So now once we get to line 27 here, we just have to check one thing, right? If we have one character left in our heap and its count is greater than one, then we know that we can't have anything else to split that last character, so we have to return the empty string. So we'd say if max heap is not empty, right? If our max heap is not empty, we wanna say our last character is our max heap dot remove, and then if the count of that character is greater than one, then we know that we actually cannot possibly split that character, right? Because we don't have anything else in our heap, meaning we only have one character left. So we'd have to return the empty string here. And otherwise, if we have one thing left in our heap, but it only occurs one time, then we just have to add it 
to our result, right? So we could say result.append that last character. And finally, once you get to line 35 here, guys, all we should have to do, hopefully, if we did this right, is return result.toString, and that should just about do it. So it's kind of a lot of code for a leak code question. Let's go again, just kind of like run through the logic in the runtime and space complexity. So as a quick recap, we're gonna put the character counts into a hash map. We're gonna build a max heap based on their frequency. Then we're going to try and take greedily the frequently, the most frequently occurring two characters, place them one after another, uh, account for the fact that we've used them by decrementing their counts in our hash map and adding them back into the heap if we need to. Once we only have one thing or zero things left in our heap, right? Our, if our heap's not empty, we have one character left. And so if that character occurs more than once still, we have to return the empty string. But if it doesn't, right, if it only occurs once, then we can just add it to our string. And then finally, we'll just return whatever string we built as a string. Great, so hopefully that works. So now as our runtime, let's think about what we're doing, right? We're just going through all the characters here, putting them in a hash map. We're building a max heap, which is going to be O of n time, but then we're trying to remove everything from the heap which is gonna give us n log n time. So that's gonna be n log n, where n is the number of characters in our string. And then in terms of our space complexity, right, this is also gonna be O of n, because we're building a heap first off. And then we're also on top of that, we're actually adding everything to a string builder. Uh, again, this is gonna be O of n memory, where n is the number of characters in our string. So let's run this, let's make sure that it works. Cannot find, oh, because this is capital S, great. So capital S, do we use this anywhere else? I don't think so, so let's submit this again. Because I forgot an S. <laughs> okay, let's try running it again. Ah, this should have been max heap dot add all, right? Because we're adding more than one element. So many mistakes today. Why am I having so many typos? Counts dot get current. Counts dot get current. <laughs> Yay, and finally it worked. All right, guys, so that's how to solve reorganized string in Java. Again, it's a question that's being asked by Amazon right now. If you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful, do me a favor and leave the video a like and subscribe to the channel for more. And I'll see you guys in the next one.